Hello there, Kelly here. Suppose you wanted to record the details captured from every form submission made for lead inquiries, for example. The best way to do this would be to connect your form app using Zapier to pass the data to wherever you want to record it. You may, however, find that some forms you use for collecting data do not integrate with Zapier. But don't lose faith, there's a solution. You could set up an inbox filter to push form submission confirmation emails into an email parser and then extract that information into a Google Sheet, a CRM, or a database like Airtable. So Zapier's email parser is perfect for this setup. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a really simple one-step Zap using the email parser. So let's take a look at how to set up a really simple one-step Zap which will help you to extract information from emails using uh, Zapier's email parser. So in this example, we're going to be um, using form submissions, so web form submission entries um, as the example. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is set up our trigger step, which will be um, the app to use would be email parser by Zapier. The trigger event would be new email. And when you select choose an account, uh, you'll be prompted to actually create a new Zapier email parser account, uh, which I won't go through now, but essentially it just takes you into the Zapier email parser um, app. And the first thing you want to do is click on create mailbox, which will then create this generic um, email address, which you then forward um, one of your form entries to or any other email that you want to go through the, the email parser. And as soon as you've done that, you'll be taken to a screen where you can start mapping out the fields that you want to email parser to extract. So if we have a look here, um, this is a form that I, um, I sent through to, to the parser. And um, if we look at the template, for this, you'll see that I actually mapped out that I want the name, the phone number, email address, uh, property street address, um, property street address, the city, the zip code, the services, and the notes to be pulled through every time this um, a, a form entry is sent to this, this email parser. Um, so if I wanted to change this, I could go and edit extra template. And all I would have to do is select the field, the data that I want to select, and I can name this anything that I want. Um, but in this case, I, I know that it's it's the name. So I would just click on that and it would actually put that through. But we're not going to uh, go through this um, specifically now. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. I just want to show you um, what the information looks like when you come through um, and send um, some information to the email parser and you've mapped everything out. Now, one thing that I like to talk about and mention is that it's really um, the email parser is really, really useful if you have very consistent data every time your forms get sent through. So um, you don't have any gaps or you have, um, you know, you've, you've got this information that gets sent through every single time. You've got a name, you've got a phone number, you've got an email address. Um, where it doesn't work so well is if you have differences in in your data so i would suggest that if you've got different forms that you use that for every form you set up a new mailbox address and um, set up a filter within your email to forward that to the specific mailbox address and that will help you to map data specifically now um, the email parser by zapier app works quite well where you can essentially teach it to um, understand what data you want to extract if it's not straightforward. So um, you can report it as inaccurate or accurate, and that helps it. And if you want to map in further information, you can just edit the, the extra template. So that's the basics of setting up the email parser by Zapier app. And if we go back into our Zap, um, we would just um, choose our mailbox. And in this case, we've got Fred's renovations because we've in this part, we can actually change um, the name of the mailbox rather than having it as, um, as a really generic uh, title. This helps you to identify um, your mailboxes. And um, with our trigger test, we're just, we've just pulled through the information that we just um, looked at here. 
Now in our action step, all I want to do is just um, send through my form information into a Google Sheet. And so every time there's a new form submission, I just want to create a new row in Google Sheets. So my app is going to be Google Sheets. My action event is going to be create spreadsheet row. Uh, my account uh, would set up as, as normal and uh, authenticate that. And then with the action, um, all you need to do is choose the spreadsheet that you want to use. So in this case, I've just created this really simple spreadsheet uh, with all of the data that I want to collect. And um, then the sheet, of course, which is that one. And then we just map in all of the information that's been passed through, which is exactly what we see here. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then when you test your action, you'll obviously have this information sent into here. So that is just really quick one step zap that you can use to extract information from emails using the email parser by Zapier app. So if you want an easy way to get the zap set up, you can grab the template at solva.co.uk forward slash templates. And for more tips like this one, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so that you're instantly notified when I post a new video. And lastly, if you'd like to be notified when my new course is ready with tons of Zapier tips and tricks, including how to use the email parser by Zapier, check out the video description notes down below for how to get on my course waiting list. So see you on the next video. Work smarter, not harder.